Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are going to talk about really high yield points on the ciliary ganglion. So what exactly is ciliary ganglion? The ciliary ganglion is basically a parasympathetic ganglion which is situated near the apex of the orbit and it is situated between the optic nerve and the lateral rectus muscle. So you can see over here the lateral rectus actually has been removed and the optic nerve is situated medial to this ciliary ganglion. Coming to the ciliary ganglion connections, we basically will be studying about the sensory root of the ciliary ganglion, the sympathetic root and the parasympathetic root. So these are the three roots and three important connections of the ciliary ganglion. First, let us try and understand some of the labeling of this diagram. So this labeled over here is the sensory root. Then this one is the sympathetic root. Then over here is the parasympathetic root. Now let's label these nerves here. So this one is the nasociliary nerve, which is basically a branch of the first division of the trigeminal nerve, that is the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Now this nasociliary is continuing as another nerve here, labeled as the long ciliary nerve. And now you can see another nerve which is coming out of the ciliary ganglion and that nerve is the short ciliary nerve. Now what about this nerve? This is the nerve coming from the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve and this nerve is the nerve to inferior oblique. Okay, so just remember this labeling of this diagram and we will now uh, try to understand all of them in detail. Okay, now if you would carefully observe over here, although the ciliary ganglion has sensory root, sympathetic root, as well as the parasympathetic root, and although it has contents related to all these uh, structures, it is only the parasympathetic fibers which are going to relay in the ciliary ganglion, right? Now that makes sense because ciliary ganglion is a parasympathetic ganglion and therefore only the parasympathetic fibers which are coming from the edinger westphal nucleus are going to relay in the ciliary ganglion. All right, so that was one high yield point. Now first let's, let us discuss the sympathetic connections of the ciliary ganglion. Now, we all know that the sympathetic nerve fibers for the eye basically start from the hypothalamus. So, what I mean to say is that the first order neurons will be present in the hypothalamus. From there, the sympathetic nerves are going to travel up to the sympathetic root in the spinal cord. And over here, basically, over here is the sympathetic root which is present in the spinal cord. And to be more precise, this center in the spinal cord basically has the levels from C8. T1 and T2 and this center is known as the ciliospinal center of Budge. Okay, ciliospinal spinal center of Budge, right? So these are basically the level 2 uh, neurons of this sympathetic system. From here, the fibers are going to go to the superior cervical ganglion and it is in the superior cervical ganglion that these sympathetic fibers are going to relay. Okay, so what I mean to say is these fibers which are coming from the hypothalamus, uh, that is the level 1, okay, and then going up to this uh, celiospinal center of budge, which is level 2, and from there they go to the superior cervical ganglion, that is level 3, right? Now, up till this is basically known as the preganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers. Then the fibers are going to relay in the superior cervical ganglion, and from here you will have the postganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers. These postganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers basically form a plexus around the internal carotid artery and then they are going to travel within the orbit and ultimately they are going to reach the ciliary ganglion. Now over here the sympathetic root has been basically labeled in blue color and you can see very carefully that not all the fibers will travel by this root of the ciliary ganglion. Some of them actually can travel straight away in the nasociliary nerve and from the nasociliary nerve they can go through the long ciliary nerve and these are the fibers which are traveling into the nasociliary nerve and into the long ciliary nerve. These are the ones which are going to actually reach the dilator pupillae muscle and therefore cause dilatation of the pupil. Okay, and therefore, whenever the sympathetic nerves, uh, whenever sympathetic nerves are affected at any level, you can get something known as the Horner syndrome, in which the pupil will be constricted because the sympathetic function is basically the dilatation of the pupil. 
all right so now apart from that you can see some of the fibers will travel through this sympathetic root of the ciliary ganglion and then will pass through the ciliary ganglion just as uh, just like that without any relaying over here and they will travel into the short ciliary nerve and these are the ones which are basically responsible for auto regulatory function that is the vasoconstriction or regulating the vascular tone in the eye Okay, so remember the sympathetic uh, root of the ciliary ganglion just allows the sympathetic fibers to pass through it without them relaying within the ciliary ganglion and then they are going to pass to the short ciliary nerve and these fibers basically are the fibers which are associated with autoregulation or the regulation of the vascular tone uh, in the eye. Whereas the sensory fiber, the, whereas the sympathetic fibers which are passing through the nasociliary nerve through the long ciliary nerve are the ones which are not going to the ciliary ganglion and as they are not passing through the ciliary ganglion, they are going to travel in the long ciliary nerve and directly supply the dilator pupillae muscle leading to dilatation of the pupil. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So with this, we finish the sympathetic connection or the sympathetic route of the ciliary ganglion. Now let us talk about the sensory connection of the ciliary ganglion or the sensory root of the ciliary ganglion. You can see over here the sensory nerve fibers are labeled in red color. All right. So these fibers basically the ganglion which is responsible for carrying the sensations from the eye is basically the trigeminal ganglion also known as the gasserian ganglion. Okay, and this is located in the pons, right? So you have this trigeminal ganglion and we know that the trigeminal ganglion or the trigeminal nerve basically has three divisions. It has ophthalmic division known as V1, it has maxillary division known as V2 and it has a mandibular division known as V3. Now it is the ophthalmic division which is going to give rise to this nasociliary nerve. So I'm not going to discuss the entire pathway over here because we are focusing on the ciliary ganglion. But still it's important to know that the ophthalmic division gives rise to the nasociliary nerve. So as you can see over here, these fibers are basically traveling the nasociliary nerve and then again they are going to travel via the long ciliary nerve into the eye, right? However, you can see some of the fibers will actually travel into the nasociliary nerve but then instead of going to the long ciliary nerve, they are going to pass to the ciliary ganglion and then they are going to reach the eye via the short ciliary nerve. However, over here, there is no difference. Both the long ciliary nerve as well as the short ciliary nerve, they are going to carry the pain, touch and temperature sensation from the eye. Okay, so there are literally so many nerves in the eye which are taking care of the sensations from the eye that means the cornea the iris the ciliary body okay and that is the reason why the eye is really really sensitive to all these sensations whether we have keratitis uveitis iritis we will feel a lot of pain and thanks uh, to this uh, pathway that this long ciliary nerve and the short ciliary nerve both are going to basically be carrying all these sensation to the trigeminal ganglion Okay, so that was regarding the sensory route. Again, you can note that there is no relay within the sensory, uh, there's no relay of the sensory fibers within the ciliary ganglion. Okay, so now let's talk about the most important connection of the ciliary ganglion and that is a parasympathetic connection because this is the one that is going to relay within the ciliary ganglion. Now, in one of our videos, we told you that the parasympathetic fibers basically come from the edinger westphal nucleus, which is one of the subnucleus of the oculomotor nucleus, right, which is located in the midbrain. All right. Now, these parasympathetic nerve fibers are going to travel superficially within the oculomotor nerve. So, the parasympathetic fibers are basically labeled in green color over here, right, and they're traveling superficially within the oculomotor nerve. Now, the oculomotor nerve basically gives two divisions within the eye. It has a superior division which supplies the superior rectus and the levator palpebris superioris. Then it has an inferior division which will supply basically the inferior rectus, the medial rectus and the inferior oblique. Now, these parasympathetic fibers are going to travel in the inferior division and to be more precise, they are going to travel within the nerve to the inferior oblique on their way to reaching the ciliary ganglion. So that's the reason why we labeled that nerve over there. All right. Okay. So now after traveling to the ciliary ganglion, they are going to relay in the ciliary ganglion and these post uh, ganglionic parasympathetic nerve fibers are going to supply two structures. 
Number one, the sphincter pupillae, and this is something which is responsible for the constriction of the pupil. And number two, they are going to supply the ciliary muscle within the eye. Okay, very, very important point. Now, over here, I would like to tell you that most of the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers which are coming out of the uh, ciliary ganglion by the short ciliary nerves, most of them are going to supply basically the sphincter pupillar muscle and there's going to be less supply to the ciliary muscle. So that is one important point that you must know. All right, so you can see over here, so this is the oculomotor nerve and you can see that this is over here is the Edinger Westphal nucleus, right? So the Edinger Westphal nucleus sends the parasympathetic nerve fibers which are going to travel in the oculomotor nerve. To be precise, they travel within the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve and they are going to travel in, within the nerve to the inferior oblique, right? From there, they are going to travel here to the ciliary ganglion and till this level, whatever you saw was the preganglionic parasympathetic nerve fibers. Then they are going to relay within the ciliary ganglion and travel via the short ciliary nerve and supply the pupil as well as the ciliary muscle. Right? So within the pupil, they are going to cause constriction of the pupil and they are going to help in accommodation for near task as well. Right? So that was your Edinger Westphal nucleus, oculomotor nerve. And as I told you that, it is going to help in accommodation for the near task as well. All right. So to summarize, this was these were the various connections. We had a sensory route, we had a sympathetic route, and we had a parasympathetic route. But it is basically the parasympathetic one, which is basically responsible for uh, the major action in the ciliary ganglion. So only the one which is getting relayed within the ciliary ganglion. Now you can see we have this long ciliary nerve, which was basically uh, carrying with it the sensory fibers as well as the sympathetic fibers the long ciliary nerve the short ciliary nerve on the other hand can uh, basically carry all the three fibers sympathetic parasympathetic as well as the uh, sensory fibers so what happens over here is that when there is a damage to the ciliary ganglion okay so let's talk about the clinical applications of the ciliary ganglion so what exactly is going to happen if the ciliary ganglion over here gets affected honestly speaking it is a parasympathetic route which is traveling solely in the ciliary ganglion by the short ciliary nerves and therefore whenever there's damage in the ciliary ganglion or to the short ciliary nerve it is the pupil constriction and accommodation that is going to get affected the sympathetic fibers as the sympathetic function as well as the sensory function is going to be preserved because these fibers are also uh, being carried within the long ciliary nerve so that is one important point to remember and let me tell you that usually whenever the ciliary ganglion gets affected a condition is seen known as the aditonic pupil and in aditonic pupil you see very tonic slow contraction of or constriction of the pupil to light reflex but a good uh, accommodation reflex now if you want to know more about this you already have a video on aditonic pupil and i would give the link in the description box for that okay so what if the short ciliary nerve is affected i already told you that whenever the short ciliary nerves are affected and let me tell you, there are so many short ciliary nerves. So you need to uh, basically damage all of them or majority of them to get a parasympathetic um, dysfunction. Okay. However, if the ciliary ganglion is affected, then definitely the parasympathetic function is going to get affected. The patient is going to have his light reflex affected and the patient will have accommodation uh, reflex also getting affected and obviously as i told you most of the short ciliary nerves are going and supplying the sphincter pupillae and therefore it is the light reflex which gets affected much more than the accommodation reflex all right so if you want to know more about this topic you can actually see this video on pupillary light reflex where we discuss in detail about the parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, pathways in the eye you can know about the accommodation power of the eye, about what exactly is accommodation and the physiology of accommodation by this video. And also we have a video on the Horner, Horner syndrome. Apart from that, we have the full series on abnormal pupil uh, reactions and abnormal pathological pupils, right? So the link to all of that is going to be given in the description bo box. So that's all for today. I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you and have a nice day.